Good evening, Steady On community, and welcome to a step-by-step live recorded. I'm Angie Mm -hmm. Bauman, and I'm here with my friends, Lisa and Maria, and we are going to use my step-by-step Bible study method to get into a verse of scripture. I've been excited about doing this with you ladies for a (laughs) while. We're going to talk about friendship tonight, and we're going to use Proverbs 27, 9, and step-by-step is a method that takes one word in one verse of scripture, unpacks it quite a bit, actually, and then seeks to find life application. And so Proverbs 29, no, Proverbs 27, 9 in the NIV says this, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. One more time. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. And so step one is to choose our word and our word for today is pleasantness. And step two is investigate. The first thing we do in the investigate step is to compare this word in other translations. And so Maria's done some work for us on that. Maria, what have you found? I did. I, I didn't find a whole lot in a variation in the, in the comparisons. Um, most of them, the message, the CEV, all those use, I mean, King James version use sweetness or sweet, mm-hmm. um, to, to in, in the place sweetness of, of a friend. We're all so yes. sweet. Aren't yes. we? That's our disposition always. <laughs> sweet friendship, <Sure>. sweetness. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, the CEV though, I did, um, said true friendship. Mm-hmm. So they, um, Um, but I, I had mentioned earlier the TPT version, like the whole verse, I love their verbiage. Um, they also, also use the word sweet in place of pleasant, but I'm going to take a moment to read that one because it says sweet friendship refreshes the soul, awakens our hearts with joy for good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incense of God's presence. Mm. So I just love that. I like that too. Yeah. So it's talking about perfume and incense bring joy to the heart. Like that's good, right? Like this is, you know, this is, this is a good thing. Like things, worldly things, if you will, you know, are good and they can bring us joy. And it says the pleasantness or the sweetness or the, the goodness, right? The goodness of a friend springs from their heart heartfelt advice. And so that also the way that something in the world can bring joy to the heart. So does the heartfelt advice of a sweet friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's brings good. Joy. Yeah. yeah. Brings joy. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I, and when I was studying it, the word pleasant, I was <laughs> reminded of something that I have always said, sweetness and friend, true friendship are, um, to sweeter. I know I can't use the word to describe the word, but they're a sweeter, more uh, better for your soul balm than the word pleasant is to me. Because I, I'm reminded of when I would take my kids to take um, pictures at pennies when they were little. Yes. And you just want the perfect little picture. I want it to be great, great smiles. Everything's lovely. And then that doesn't work. So you go, well, I just want it to be good. And I can always remember at the end going, I just want it to be pleasant. Get a pleasant <laughs> picture. So I would say, I, I just want it to mind. be over. <laughs> Right. That I want too. to leave without crying. <laughs> so, so I, well, then there's that. <laughs> so no, when, I, when I read so this, it's like layers like, pleasant. of, yeah. Pleasant? Mm-hmm. I yeah. like sweetness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweetness is, is good. The, the next part of the investigate step is to look at the original word. And the original word in Hebrew is methic, which does mean sweetness. I agree with you, Lisa. It's not good to use the word to describe the word. And it does mean pleasant, <laughs> pleasantness. But it says pleasantness of discourse, which means written or spoken communication or debate. And so it's like this that we're doing, right? It's mm-hmm. it's not just our actions, but it's like our aura, you know, yes. think, think about perfume again, right? It's like the energy. Can I say it that way? It's the energy that we have individually, but then also together, right? There's a, there's a pleasantness, there's a sweetness, there's a joy, there is um, a goodness in that interaction. That's even like separate from just the words, you know, the words say one thing, but the energy the aura. Yeah. What else am I trying I, to say? You know, the tone, when, when tone. Tone. The, yeah. t- the uh, and the fragrance, the mm-hmm. incense fragrance, that mm-hmm. kind of yeah. thing. That's yeah. what yeah. you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. With that, that the yes. aroma that, that 
the sweet aroma that's around you in the spirit. You can't grab onto it, but you, right. you sense that it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's from a word. The root word um, is means to be or become sweet or pleasing. You'll like this guys. And it also means to suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time, I guess there's when, moments. I know, <laughs> this friendship sucks. <laughs> right. I know. Or the, the smell itself. <laughs> but it's not like that. It's not like that. It is like sucking on the source of something and then becoming like that something. So I was thinking like a bee or a butterfly, yeah. right? That, you know, that like that sucks the nectar, the sweetness. Mm-hmm. It's attracted mm-hmm. to the sweetness. Then it becomes the it sucks it absorbs i don't know how to, the sweetness takes and in. then yeah. it actually benefits from the sweetness like you know the bees make honey and the butterflies pollinate and things that i don't know very much about but i think that's like the end of my education on that but it's how like about a the, mother a nursing mother oh mm-hmm. yeah there's like this mm-hmm. thing that transfers that's a good way mm-hmm. to say that transfers from the source of the sweetness into the person that absorbs the sweetness and then because of the transfer they become able to offer something that they didn't before or couldn't think of the bond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bond yes. that happened. Yes. It's just, yeah, yeah. that inexplainable yeah. bond. I actually, right. you know, mm-hmm. it's really hard to, right. Yeah. 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 Again, you can't catch onto it exactly. Like you can't grab onto it, but you can sense that it's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This word is used also in Proverbs 16, 21, that says the wise in heart are called discerning and gracious words promote instruction. So in that verse, this word is actually translated to gracious, which is uh, another interesting word to think about, like the graciousness of a friend Mm -hmm. springs from their heartfelt advice, you know, again, because I, I think about this disposition between friends and I, you guys have heard me say this before, but like, it makes me think of something that I learned really early in my marriage. And that is like, I should only talk about my marriage with people who are as invested in my marriage working as I am, or even more so. Right. Mm -hmm. And this heartfelt advice that they're talking about, this is, this comes from a true friend Mm -hmm. that isn't about stirring up trouble. That isn't about Mm, what, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, fueling a fire that, that maybe if I'm headed in the wrong direction, both of you guys at, at different times in our friendships have been able to throw water on a fire that didn't need fuel. And the way that I can receive that in these friendships is because I already know you only want what's best for me right? Mm -hmm. Like with the love of the Lord, Mm -hmm. you offer advice or counsel or redirection or something like that in my life. And I think that, and I thought about that a lot doing this one. It's what a valid point. This is not talking about, you know, going to a Christian brother or sister that you only, that you barely know Yes, and And judging and telling them what to do. And I don't like how this is, this is true friendship. Mm -hmm. This is Mm -hmm. the trust level. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, and, you know, when you're doing this, sometimes you forget that distinction in this particular verse, I think. Yes. And the CEV, when I go back to that, what Maria read, Mm -hmm. the CEV says the sweet smell of incense can make you feel good, but true friendship is better Mm -hmm. still. And that doesn't happen Mm -hmm. without living together for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't mean like in the same apartment, but you know, do it. Force it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a level of discipleship to the component of the relationship too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the life on life, like, yes. you know, um, mm-hmm. the time together, like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there, there have been times in our friendship, you guys tell me if you think this is true, where I think both of you have like, um, this is what I feel sometimes. Well, you're the Bible teacher and like, you're, you know, you're the pastor Bible teacher. And so I don't disciple you, Lisa Maria. Right. And, and I always like laugh at that because I'm like, okay, (laughs) nothing could be further from the truth. (laughs) Like, you know, because it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, yes, I am those things, but me as much, if not more than anyone needs that Christ's witness in the body of a true Mm -hmm. friend and Christ's words, sometimes maybe when he's speaking to me and I'm not hearing him because there's something in between me and him, or there's something that I, whatever, right. But he can use your words to break down something that I, that it's like, it happens so much quicker because I, I, this, I sit up and listen when you guys say something to me. So Anyway, Pasha, with all that, you're the Bible teacher. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're the Bible teacher. Uh, okay. And so the next part of the investigate step is to look into some commentary. And so Lisa did that work for us. Yep. What did you find? Uh, it, it talks about uh, a lot about giving delight, which um, 
means a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, The sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Strong, hearty counsel from a friend is sweet and can bring delight just as it is natural for ointment and perfume, like Maria was saying, Mm -hmm. to delight the heart. Um, This proverb should make us ask, and this is the key for me. Yes. Is there someone in my life who can give hearty counsel? Can I give hearty counsel to someone else? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I underlined the same point, which goes yes. back to what you were just talking yes. about. Like who is worthy of this role in my life and who am I worthy to offer this role in someone else's life? And that right. doesn't mean worthy as in we're better or worse than other people. It means worthy. Like I, I, I think Maria's is completely right. I, I need to recognize I have to earn this place of trust in someone's life or I mean, there are times when we can probably speak truth and in a pastoral role, there are times when someone asks me, someone I don't know very well asks for something of me because I'm in that role in their life, Mm -hmm. but friend to friend that, that takes, as Maria said, just living some life together and being able to recognize the other person's heart and know that they even want to receive something from the right. Lord through you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 We have lived some life together. We so have, <laughs> we've done a little bit of that. Yes. Yes. Uh, what else did you find? Uh, uh, the, the, um, the simile about the oil and incense, mm-hmm. um, originates, yeah. um, both the outward fragrances and the wholesome counsel produce a sense of well being. Mm-hmm. I like that, that sense of well being. This is not an antagonistic, uh, conversation or, uh, Counsel. Yes. This is um, true, genuine, helpful. You feel um, cared for, yes, even in the midst of it, even if mm-hmm. it's hard. Yeah. I remember one time I was at dinner with Maria. Ooh, get nervous, Maria. I'm going to talk. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was going through something and I, there was like, you know, two possible outcomes. Either it was going to go the way that I wanted it to, or it really wasn't going to go the way that I wanted it to. And the, the outcomes were like vastly apart, if you know what I mean. And, um, we had been praying about it for a while. It had been an ongoing process and it was going to be hurtful and offensive if it didn't go the way I wanted, even though that was a strong possibility. Right. And we were at (laughs) dinner one night and I was talking about it again, because I had been talking about it for months and Maria looked straight at me, you know, straight Mm -hmm. at me and said, you understand this is likely not going to go the way that you want it to. <laughs> and, but it was so loving because what she was really saying is, I don't know. Do you remember doing this? Maria? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what she was really saying is I care about the fact that I'm not sure you are maybe even being realistic or, or, or strengthening your heart against, or I don't know, whatever I, I'm putting words in your mouth. So I won't say I don't want to, cause I am, but, but that what I felt was someone who cared enough to say the hard thing. Like, mm. you know, that this, this is likely not going to go the mm. way that you want it to. And I was able to say for the first time, really, actually, I did know that mm. I know, mm. I know that, um, mm. it's still hard to hear. So, mm. um, mm-hmm. but, but it was actually quite refreshing. What's the word? It was, it was actually quite like fragrant, joyful, <laughs> fragrant, pleasant, joyful. Pleasant. Then, pleasant. I, didn't, there. I didn't have to pretend with mm-hmm. her. Yeah. I, I did know, I did know it wasn't going to go the way I wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I found some interesting commentary that kind of goes along with that from John Gale. I don't know, yeah. um, but it said the sweet counsel of a friend is better than his own meaning like just relying on your own yes. life advice mm-hmm. and more rejoices his heart and gives him more pleasure mm. like than just relying on his, you know our own you know yes it is helpful to bring somebody alongside or talk through it with somebody or you know a confidant kind of issue yes so and, and yeah that said you know um my personality is i don't really like people telling me what to do we know um, <laughs> But, but there are some people that I, you know, I trust and value and it is for my own good. However, there's so many times when I will go to one of you and ask for advice and counsel. And that's certainly either, you know, easier on both sides, in my opinion, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, if if you're really, really seeking it, then you're ready to hear whatever Mm -hmm. is coming, even though, like you said, you already know maybe what it's going to be, but you just need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Lisa knows (laughs) she's in trouble when I start the sentence, you know, I love you. <laughs> Let's push on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know let's, what? Just, let's just pause but, right here. I'll, but we'll do that because yeah. I know that you will yeah. guide me correctly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even though 
Um, I know I don't really want to hear it, but I need mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And there's only certain people you can do that right. with, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That you've been down the road mm-hmm. before, maybe in, you know, maybe in smaller ways or whatever, you've been down that road before and you know, what, however this goes, the person one doesn't look away no, no matter how mm-hmm. it goes. And two, even if this gets a little hard, we have enough experience together that it's going to circle back. It's going to mm-hmm. circle back. Yeah. With this it, real similar to the one that Maria just read, I found this in the um, Benson commentary that says much more his faithful counsel rejoice a man's soul, especially when he is at such a loss that he not knows not how to advise himself, which mm. is like a fancy language, mm. but basically um, it's so much like in that moment where you said, it's not, it's likely not going to go the way you want. Like it was so, it was really refreshing actually. Cause I'm like, Oh, you see that too. Mm-hmm. I cannot, I can, I can know that I have like a companion in what I'm actually wrestling with is not so much I, part of it's hoping that it goes a certain way, but part of it is dealing with the fact that this is likely going to be a failure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, did you try to rewrite it, Lisa? The, at the end of the investigate step, we try to rewrite the verse in our own words as we begin to think about what it means to us. How'd you take a step? I wrote, that um, a true friendship is a connection of the hearts that allows for authentic counsel and bring joy, brings joy to both people. Yeah. Or I should say all people. Yeah. Yeah. Maria, did you try? I did. And uh, well, I won't tell you my, what I think my keyword is. I'll let you, I'll let you listen. Mine says, <laughs> the aroma of allowing true friendship brings much joy, gladness, and counsel. Okay. Well, aroma. my keyword in that rewrite <laughs> is allowing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, because, thank you. Good job. You passed. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have to, uh, we have to allow it in. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we can't keep walled up or, or whatever. Um, but the you know, I said that, you can't have as well. 50. You did? <laughs> yeah. Good job. <laughs> that, that, a connection of the hearts that allows yes. for authentic counsel. She yeah. wasn't I, listening what, to me. I was. was it, read the first part of yours because I like the first part of yours. So oh, okay. A true fr- right. friend, I, yeah, a true friendship is a connection of the hearts. Connection, yeah. that connection of the hearts. And so yeah. that, yeah, Your we all kind of saw that. Like, like, oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Connected yes. hearts. That's a good yeah. book title or something. That's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. I wrote, mine's different. Mine does not say allows. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, a true friend wants the best for me. And when she offers counsel, yeah. it feels like she sees me and cares about my life. Nothing is sweeter than being both known and loved. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she's right. Cause she's the Bible person. Right. Teacher, exactly. so. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I don't play that game. Okay. Maria, <laughs> step three is find the promise of God. And what did you find in here? Well, I, um, one of my first promises is that he's always our truest friend. Mm. always he's always our confidant that we should probably seek first even before we go to human counsel you mean you know our friendship counsels are good but if i've taken the time to at least present it to the lord and pray through it a little bit i can like lisa said better hear or you know my heart can be softened so he's always our truest friend another one is um um, he's trustworthy trustworthy because he promises to hold us. Yeah. I mean, what we yes. bring to him, he'll hold close and dear and won't shame us for it. Or, mm-hmm. You know, you know, uh, you know, full forgiveness. Then I had other words like joyful, peace, solid and true. Yes. Um, so, yeah. 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 I didn't have any of the same words. <laughs> I had many no, of good. the same you words. Did? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would add no favoritism because his counselors for yeah. all, but mm-hmm. just same as Maria said, the very first one I put is the ultimate friend. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the friendship. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I put that God is pure. He's not self-serving or competitive because I can be like that in relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I put that he's generous with his time and resources. I would link that probably under the true friend umbrella. Right. Because I think probably one of the reasons that I go to something like that is because I'm always nervous as you ladies know that if I don't need to need anything because that's bothers someone. And one of the sweetest things about my relationship with the Lord is that I've gotten over that in my years where with him, you know, where I don't think, and it sounds crazy when I say it out loud, but I used to just like with people think I don't need to bother him with this. And I wouldn't, I don't even know if I would have said that out loud, but I know that's how I felt. And I've gotten over that where I'm like, it doesn't matter how many times before it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter how ridiculous that I need what I need. Um, he doesn't, he's not exhaustible of that you know, with that. And, um, and I also put that he's a shield because it protects me from the danger of control. 
of negative self-talk and of overwhelm, like being able to share with him is a protection from those things. Because again, as I've said before, shame, and Maria said, I think, you know, it, it cannot grow when it is brought to the light. And when, even sometimes when I'm just able to share it, even just with him, but especially with like one of you or both of you, there's just this like, understanding that I've said this out loud. This is what I thought. This is what I did, whatever. And everything is still the same. Now mm-hmm. the sky didn't fall in The people didn't run away screaming, you mm-hmm. know, and there's just, there's a, that helps me not have this, not, it helps me fight the temptation. I need to fix this myself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's another one. I, unconditional love was another yeah. one I had mm-hmm. right. as a yeah. characteristic or yeah. promise. Like he, yeah. Yep. yep. I mean, That's hard for us to wrap mm-hmm. our mind around because it is don't mm-hmm. really Yep, know how to give is. or <laughs> accept that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, step number four is to identify the lie of the enemy. And for me, I, this step is always so important because it, again, it, it helps us ask the question, if this is true and we believe that it's true or we wouldn't be in here studying it. Right. But if, if we believe that heartfelt, heartfelt advice from a true friend brings joy, then why are we so hesitant to seek or receive whichever way it is heartfelt advice from a true friend, right? Or give for that matter. You know, why, what makes us believe that that's not the right way to behave and the enemy's greatest tactic is always be afraid. So what are we afraid of? What is the lie? And for me, I wrote down, don't trust her. That's a big, for me. Um, and also remember, you'll never belong anywhere. That's mm-hmm. for me. And so, and if you tell her this, right. Or if you try to speak this truth in her life, then you will either you'll scare her or you'll offend her or you will what, um, you'll push her away. Something Jeopardize like that. Her, right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And, um, also the lie I wrote down was you're a bother I was just saying, I was just speaking mm-hmm. to that before. Yeah. What about you guys? Did you find a lot. I use the term that, you know, we use a lot amongst us is they can't hold your stories. Don't trust them. Just mm-hmm. like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and, and what makes them think they have the right to tell you what to do? Now, does that not sound like something that I hear? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like our Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Gives you the right. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the lie. I they think have, one of the have the right. Mm-hmm. I think one of the most humbling things that's happened, like in my relationship with the two of you, is that especially with Lisa, just because of personalities, not not because just because of personalities, but there have been a couple of times where one of you has said to me, uh, "I'm I'm nervous to say this to you, but I'm going to anyway." Right? Like, and and that is this to me. Mm-hmm. That is the mm-hmm. like pushing through the lie because mm-hmm. I'm actually going to stand on the faith that God is trustworthy. And that you, my friend, are trustworthy and this is going to be okay. Even if you don't agree with me, even if you don't like what I'm about to say, I believe that I can say it here and you'll hold it as Lisa said mm-hmm. so well, uh, and we'll, whatever it is, we'll work through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Maria? Did you find a lie? Um, yeah, I had, mine was pretty similar to yours. Being alone and handling things on my own is probably best. Um, not bothering anybody with, mm-hmm. you know, what I have going on. Mm-hmm. And another one that I'm um I struggle with sometimes like because not everyone needs to be at this level but um one of the lies is they will eventually leave so why invest Mm. kind of thing like Mm. you know uh we're in a season of weird friendship not us uh, Michael and I you know like um we're kind of in a season of weird we're always in a season of weirdness yes but you know like people come (laughs) friendships come and go we've talked about that before but you're like do you invest in this one or do you not do you do you Trust. I mean, you got to take the steps to go to the deeper levels, but, but why kind of thing. And I think that's a really good point because I think maybe some would say it's easy for us now because the three of us have been friends for 20 plus years and Mm -hmm. we have done a lot of life together, but there's a place at which this begins. And that's Mm -hmm. the scariest place of Mm -hmm. all, because Mm -hmm. we have these trust relationships with each other. Not that we never hurt each other, but you know, we're, we've kind of worked through some of those earlier friendship insecurities and have decided it's worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good point because if, if someone happens to be saying, I I don't know how to develop that, I don't know how to lean into that. I think, you know, it's, I, I was, I heard a, a counselor say at one point that it talked about like the dance that we 
have in a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you decide to change the dance, they may change with you or they may not. And so I think it's just wise to take small steps towards changing the dance. If you want more intimacy in a friendship, if you want more trust in a friendship, are you willing to show yourself vulnerable so that they know you can be trusted Mm -hmm. and see how that goes. And then, you know, because it just, it does just take some time and, and you'll learn, right. As you give, I'd be interested in what you guys say about this. You'll, you'll learn as you give, if that's a good place to give. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of where I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, this really, the Lord really could use this, but if the enemy says, "Uh -uh," Mm -hmm. uh-uh, at the first sign of this isn't going well, or this isn't worth your time or, Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, well, you're at a hard place and duck out now. (laughs) Like, yeah, you know, I don't know, but yeah, you're right. If if you give time, it can, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's a level of discernment, I think, involved Mm -hmm. in it. So if you, if you have a little bit of a gift of discernment, it's Mm -hmm. just something you feel. I I, I go back to that, like heart connection. And I'll briefly tell the story of when the three of us first met, Mm -hmm. I was new to town and we had gone to um, the local church retreat because my husband said, let's go to that. I'm not very retreaty. And uh, I did not want to go to that. I didn't know anybody. (laughs) And I had young children. And I remember coming out of our room and I had the two young children that were going to go to the childcare and Maria came up and said, Hey, I know, you know, I'll take your kids to childcare. Cause she had young children too. And then when Maria and Angie walked away, I turned to Dave, it makes me cry. And I said, those are the girls I need to know. Mm-hmm. Those are the girls I need to know. Mm-hmm. We didn't even have a very big interaction interaction at all, but mm-hmm. there was just something I'm like, those are the ones. And it turned out to be right. So, <laughs> and then she oh, stalked us. So and tried, no, <laughs> wormed my way in and no. I'm much older than them too. So it was real gracious of them no. to let me in. <laughs> no, no, no. I love that story. I yeah. never get tired of that story yeah. because it also just reminds you that, I don't know that God, uh, yeah. Like God plants this mm-hmm. desire for connection in our hearts. And, uh, you know, you were not a tough sell Lisa Wood. <laughs> <Yeah. right. laughs> but, how, but how easy would that lie have been to believe like, Oh, they're already, they're already, already friends. I'm a third wheel. I'm they third don't need wheel. Me. Yes. all those things that he yes. can say, don't Good invest point. or it's not worth it. No, yep. like those, mm, you, yep. you keep going until the Lord makes it clear that, yep. you know, yeah. it, Mm-hmm. you're done in this or whatever. Yeah. We could have been really bad news certain, just in our good church girl <laughs> clothes that day. <laughs> <laughs> Step five in the process is so what, where we just try to hang on to a negative truth, something we've learned as we've studied the verse. I'm going to put it back to you, Lisa. What's yeah. your so what for today? Well, it seems like it goes with what I was just saying. Life is a better, more joyful journey if you have friends whose advice and counsel you trust. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. yeah, that is good. Maria, did you have something? Um, yeah, I had, as life continues on, always make time to invest in some true friendships and allow the sweetness to bloom through companionship and counsel and reach out and be held. Mm. Like, it's important that's to reach out. That's a lot what you said in that. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. making time. Yes. That's key yeah. because yeah. any even in our time, I mean, even uh, you know, twenty years into this, like we, yes, yeah. I cherish our times that we've taken to go. Yes, <laughs> me play too. at the Disney yeah, World play. Park, or <laughs> be driven might, around Arizona, or we, we might do those things. But I was telling Matt, we yeah. went for a walk around the lake early this morning. And I said. I get to do this with the girls today. And I said, I think it's been close to two weeks and that's way too long since the three right. of us had had some right. catch up time because yep. a lot of times we don't go that long and I was feeling it because mm-hmm. you have to, you do have to continue to invest time. It's any relationship. It, it, it's, it doesn't grow stronger. As a matter of fact, I think it's either growing stronger or going weaker. I don't think relationships coast very long mm-hmm. at all, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's really important. And the second part you said about that, about giving and receiving, I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. how you said it. But that's reach out and held. be held. Yes, mm-hmm. I have. And you guys, it's okay to nod your head and agree with this. I, traditionally, <laughs> I have been much better at giving than receiving. I really kind of suck at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there you go that's how you try in the second part <laughs> well, I'm, getting, I'm getting better <laughs> I'm getting better mm-hmm. and um and it's so important because I think what one thing that I have not realized until lately really is what it says to the other person when mm-hmm. I won't take what you're offering like that and that says something too you know and um and so I think both those things are really really important Maria yeah mm-hmm. good job mm-hmm. yeah all right. Nice. I am always the one that prays. Do, do, would one of you ladies like to pray now that we're done? <laughs> <laughs> you might have 
loved it. You're Never. the Bible teacher. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> All right, then. I will pray. You can pray <laughs> that. Father, thank you so much for friendship. And thank you in my life for these friends that are so very dear to me, Lord. Um, thank you for the way that you have blessed me with them and shared them with me, Lord. And I am grateful even for those moments that the conversation gets tricky, or I'm about to hear something or need to say something that I don't know how that's going to go. And yet, Lord, you have reassured me that these women see me and know me and love me. And that is a good thing. And so I'm grateful for you to see us that way. And I'm grateful for us to see each other that way. Lord, thank you so much for your word and the way that it invites us in. And we just lift all this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for studying with us and we will see you soon. Peace.